came back from a walk. Feel like, did you feel how heavy these Arantini balls are? Went past to Delhi. Oh, heavy balls. They're massive. They look like croquettes. And I was just craving a hot chocolate throughout our whole whole walk, so got some classic Cadbury's hot chocolate. I actually rate this for an instant mm -hmm. hot choc. I saw these. Couldn't resist. I love an offer. Love an offer. What if they had Vegemite ones? I mean, yeah, that would be even better, but we'd have to go to Australia for that. <laughs> and also got some white chocolate cookies. Do you want to show? Oh, yeah. We've also got some red wine, of course. And a coffee and chocolate stout. I feel like I'm having to, like, creep into this shop. <laughs> I am a big stout fan and uh, always, always on the lookout for good ones. Anything that's, say, coffee or chocolate, like porter or stout, um, I'll try it. I'll get involved. You do get some bad ones, but I think this is going to be a good one. Yeah. Luxurious oatmeal stout brewed with freshly ground coffee and roasted cacao nibs. Mm. It was also dusty on the shelf, which shows that a lot of people aren't bothered. They're not interested. Well, if you're curious, and it's good, I'll let you know. Mm. Oh, it's brewed and canned in Bristol. There we go. It's made for me. <laughs> Back in your home ends. Mmm. Creamy. <laughs> I haven't sat down for hours. We haven't. We went out. How long was our walk? Oh my god, it's eight. <laughs> Did you know it was eight? Today I have walked 4,398 steps. 14,000. 14,000. <laughs> what did I say? Four. Oh. <laughs> do you want to open these? You know you got to do it. Dip it in, because then it gets all soft. Um, oh, the battery's gonna die. Ah, oh, this fucking thing. Mm. What do you want me to do? The chest. Chest. The test. Ellie has been hammering on for ages, getting me to do the Myers Briggs personality test. Because you are just what are you gonna say <laughs> desperate to clamber into my brain and know all the ins and outs. And if you caught um, Joe's live stream, you talked with Kay about, because she is studying psychology, and she loves to know about people, and so do I. And, and I want to know what the result is. You have done it before, but also people change as mm. well. It's never a set thing. So if, if you don't know what Myers-Briggs is, by the way, it's sort of like a, a testing mechanism that allows you to understand which directions your your personality sort of pulls. And the end outcome is you get a four letter label as such. We take it quite internally as a way of like uh, always trying to improve. Like you're just always yeah. trying to form better relationships and better friendships and yeah. it's a growth thing. You know, we all balance each other out, so. Are you gonna do one as well? Or you've already done I've it already done mine. Multiple times, okay, yeah. so. Oh, sorry, tell so the I'll audience say, what are yours. So I am an INFP, 58% introverted. Uh, well, as an iron, quite even though, isn't it? Yeah, as an INFP, loads of people think I'm an extrovert. Ellie's the type of person that when we go to an event, they love Ellie. And <laughs> they don't get to know me too well because you're quiet. <laughs> I'm the quiet one, the shy one, which is hilarious because I'm the one with the YouTube channel who's in front of camera so much more. But when it comes to actual social events and whatever. Mm. I, I'm a sponge. I just sit there and listen and, and take time, you know, reflecting. Whereas you're the one who people are like, oh, have you met this Ellie person? I'm like, yeah, she's with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because when we go to an event, we're just off on our different directions. Yeah. We're never, like, together to meet people. So, yeah, I'm kind of borderline. 
my extrovertedness really comes out if you know me really well. Or like when I'm really drunk. Mm -hmm. I am 74% intuitive, 79% feeling, which is very true. I feel a lot of things and I think that's... Well, you're an emotional sponge. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm an empath and there's pros and cons to that because... I feel a lot of emotions. And then I'm 56% prospecting. All right. So that's the so long, that's, that's longest, <laughs> longest ass intro. If any of you guys know what you guys are, then let, let us know, because I, I like knowing what people are. This is, this is a free test, right? I don't have to Yeah, it's, a free, yeah, it's okay. a free test. And it's not some, like, phishing scam. No. <laughs> where it's like, what is your mother's maiden name? <laughs> your first no. pet. So I'm just going to read them out and go through it. Mm-hmm. This one thing that I know that I'm going to do, by the way, is I'm obviously going to go into detail on every single thing. I'm going to nitpick what the question means. Yeah. How much of this is like just gut result and how much does it require me breaking it down? Because you know I'm a waffle iron. <laughs> well, let's just start with the first question. Okay, well, I'm just stuck at the first one already. So it's you regularly make new friends. <laughs> and you're like, what's the measurement of that? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, if I go to an event and I meet people and I can be like really friendly with them and I... I maybe get their contact details and message on Instagram or something afterwards. But, you know, I would call them a friend if I saw them somewhere, but they're not necessarily like, like, hey, got, you know, big new friend. That's still a friend. As in, I can make new friends, or I'm always making new friends. When you see a potential friend, they are your friend. Right. It's kind of like once you've got a friend, you've you've created We've that. already gone so deep on this first question. <laughs> but you've, you've created that, that system of like, we have a a close friendship, so I trust them that their friends are going to be good friends of mine because I've already established that trust. I'm going to put two. Okay. You spend a lot of your free time exploring various random topics that pique your interest. <laughs> it's like 100% agree. Yeah, fully agree. <laughs> Seeing other people cry can easily make you feel like you want to cry too. See, 100% agree for me. Yeah. For you, disagree. I'm going to not fully disagree. I'm going to No, put, yeah. Uh, usually stay calm, even under a lot of pressure. Yeah, I never sweat. The calmest person ever. <laughs> 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 me, not so calm. <laughs> Prefer to completely finish one project before starting another. Yes. I struggle to, to move on to the next thing unless the first thing is finished. But then I do, no. I do have, oh, you yeah. see, this is where you can then extrapolate it further. And I'm such a long-term, like, <laughs> visionary <laughs> that I'm, I'm always seeing what the long-term thing is, which includes, like, longer-term projects, but I haven't actually started them. Mm, I say, yeah, the second agree. Because you also ha have so many half-finished projects. You're like, no, I'm going to come back to that later. But then um, you actually can't really move on until you do that thing. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's the one agree. I'm going to put two. You're very sentimental. Agree. Swap sentimental for hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> you have a memory box. Okay, yeah. You are sentimental. You're like, oh no, but this is the, <laughs> this is the time <laughs> I went to this event. This was my first cable. <laughs> uh, very, yeah, like things do mean a lot to me. Like, I, Yeah. No, I think I am very. I struggle to let go of things. Yeah, your boxes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even a small mistake can cause you to doubt your overall abilities and knowledge. Um, this is like imposter syndrome, isn't it? Mm. Which is something I battle with a lot. But I wouldn't say I doubt overall abilities. Just a little bit. Yeah, because it holds me back from sharing something until I know that it's it's foolproof and it's, mm -hmm. it's true fact, I won't share something. Not too interested in discussing various interpretations and analyses of creative works. Not, you are, ah, oh, this is a double negative. You are not too interested. Disagree. Right? Because I am interested. Yeah. You're more inclined to follow your head than your heart. Debatable. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so torn on this. Because I can be so headstrong of like, I know the stats, I know the facts. I've, I've researched the data on it, but other times I'm like... But then you don't... But screw the data, I'm, I know mm. what this feels. I mean, am I just right in the middle? Yeah, it can be for you. You rarely worry about whether you make a good impression on people you meet. I rarely worry. You don't really worry. Well, then I agree, because it's I rarely worry. Oh, right, yeah. They're mixing negatives and double negatives here. Well, I mean, I, I do care about making a good impression, but I don't let it 
hold me back. Okay, I'm going to say, yeah, a little. Uh, you enjoy participating in group activities. Depends on the group. <laughs> <laughs> I've been burned a lot in the past of being in group activities and I'm the one who is relied upon to do everything. And but, I don't complain because, about it, I just end up doing it. But that's because you're always the reliable one. <laughs> but looking back, it, it frustrates me. And mm. so that puts me off getting involved in the group stuff because I'm mm. like, well, but then everyone if, needs to pull their weight. But if you're with the right group... It doesn't matter whether they're bad or good. You like to be... You you like a team. But like, I also, I'm a control freak. <laughs> So, like, there are times no. when I have done everything in a group, probably because I've just naturally ended up taking control. But what if other people took control? Did you still like participating in that? Yeah. Quite often I do want to take my own direction on things. Okay, so disagree. Small disagree. Yeah. I mean, it sounds bad, doesn't it? But it's, mm. it's how you feel, isn't it? You like books and movies that make you come up with your own interpretation of the ending. Yeah. Yes. Uh, your happiness comes more from helping others accomplish things than your own accomplishments. I really enjoy helping other people and getting them through, like, creating solutions. Yeah, but then that's a contradiction, isn't it? Because that kind of is a group thing, but it's not a group thing where I get the outcome. Like, I, mm. I'm all in on it so when it's a helping a group. Mm -hmm. But it's whether you, you... It says you enjoy participating in group activities. It doesn't mm. matter about the outcome of it. It's whether you enjoy... So you could interpret it the other way. And it's like, do I enjoy groups participating in my activities? <laughs> <laughs> no, stay out. You're prone to worrying that things will take a turn for the worse. No, I'm pretty much an optimist. Mm -hmm. So disagree. Because you're not prone oh. to worrying. Oh. <laughs> Fully, do you reckon? Mid, uh, second one, I'd say. You think the world would be a better place if people relied more on rationality and less on their feelings? Uh, yeah, potentially. Because some of the things that really frustrate me in the world is how people have irrational fears for things that they don't understand. Mm. And they just need education on it. They just need, you know, to see some of the stats and the info. Uh, me, I'd say less on their feelings. Because as an em empath you think differently if you heard stories like it affects me differently if I heard stories of what people were going through with something in a situation and you're like mm, yeah is that the right or wrong choice mm. of things I mean well my my first interpretation of this is you think the world would be a better place mm. so take one of the biggest issues in the world say racism and mm. so much of it is just irrationality mm. they People just do things, and you're like, well, why? Like, for what reason? You have no reason whatsoever Actually, yeah. to think this way. Yeah, that's true. What is wrong with you? Yeah. Whereas... Because fear is a feeling. Yeah. Yeah. You think the world would be a better place if people relied more on rationality? Yes. Doesn't mean you don't have your own feelings. Mm, yeah. You prefer to do your chores before allowing yourself to relax. Absolutely. I, I can't even do anything until I've cleaned the flat. Next door's flat, and... The hallway the <laughs> and the garden and <laughs> Don't have a garden. Buy a garden to clean it. You enjoy watching people argue. Absolutely not. <laughs> Get out. Turn that TV off. You lose patience with people who is not as efficient as you. Uh I wouldn't say I necessarily lose patience with them. No, you're the most Because I'm patient. very patient. Yeah, yeah, you're the most patient person I know. You usually prefer to be around others rather than on your own. Mm, I don't like leaving people out. So if I'm planning something, I tend to invite everyone. But at the same time, I do love... Being by yourself. Silencio. <laughs> Silencio. I find it easy to empathise with a person whose experiences are very different to yours. A lot of the times when, when there is a difference of experience, I try to understand. Like yeah. I have a curiosity to understand. But I don't know if I always do. I agree. Really? You find it... I think you find it find it easy to empathise with a person. Cause you're oh, under... I, I'm always seeing both sides, aren't I? Yeah. I'm like, on the one hand, yeah, that's true. I'm always like straight <laughs> down the fence because I'm, yeah. Usually postpone finalising decisions for as long as possible. <laughs> Go on. Because of the point previous, it could be this or it could be this. And I like mm -hmm. meander back and forth. I don't make a decision quick. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a tea? Mm -hmm. 
do I want a tea? Yes or no, Joe? Yes or no? <laughs> After a long and exhausting week, a lively social event is just what you need. Yeah, I do love, like, looking forward to a big thing at the end. <laughs> you often spend a lot of time trying to understand views that are very different from your own. Yeah, I, I do. I'm always looking on the other fence which makes for a very chaotic timeline. In your social circle, you are often the one who contacts your friends and initiates activities. Disagree. <laughs> <laughs> you are so bad at planning. Fully? You are more of the type of person, like you said the other day, like after work, if someone says pub, question mark, you'd be like, yes, for sure. I'm but, always there. Yeah, but you're not the one to initiate that. Mm. You're, would you... Well, I guess if you felt like it, but it's more of them coming to you when you're always agreeing. I'm, yeah, I'm reliable in that sense. Like, they can count on me. I wouldn't say fully disagree, though. Yeah, okay. You are still bothered by mistakes that you made a long time ago. Kind of. But then, am I bothered by it? I just know... No, because you're always like... How to improve. I'm always looking to improve. You're like, not seeing mistakes of your past and you're not improving, so... It is what it is. It happened. Mm. M move on. A little bothered? It's like a niggling feeling. Yeah, sometimes I'm like, oh, I just wish I didn't, mm. you know, mention that little thing. Or like, I, I wish I'd cut that thing or I didn't cut yeah, that. Yeah, a little then. Because it just helps tell the story better and mm. people are confused. When someone thinks highly of you, you wonder how long it would take for them to do, feel disappointed in you. That's so sad. Yeah, no. Yeah, that, that's so sad. It's like, oh, <laughs> how long is this going to last that you like me? Oh. You would love a job that requires you to work alone most of the time. No, I like working with people, but I also... So this is why I get so tripped up on the group thing. Yeah, I think I'm neutral on that. You know, at first glance, how someone is feeling. Sometimes you don't realise... I don't read signals at all. Yeah, you don't take hints. The amount of times I just think someone's being nice to me and you're like, no, they're trying to get something from you. Or... Yeah, but then but then there are times in events when, you're, when you've when you told me, like, oh, did you not see, like, someone's face? And I was like, no, I didn't... Like, I don't pay attention, you're... You mm. observe that too. I'm going to say little agree. Mm. You complete things methodically without skipping over any steps. Absolutely <laughs> agree. Nothing is ever done by half. You would pass along a good opportunity if you thought someone else needed it more. Yeah. You struggle with deadlines. Nope. Not at all. You feel confident that things will work out for you. Yeah. Yeah. Just a moment. Oh, Just a moment. Extroverted. Protagonist. Okay, I'm so unsure on this extrovert thing. I think I've like completely contradicted myself at times. Hmm. Because but the thing is that I would have said you were extroverted because you like being around other people. You get energy from being around other people, like from our friends. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that you don't like to work alone. Hmm. Yeah, I think I am kind of surprised. What did we say the other day that we thought? INFJ. Okay. It's yeah. the NFJ. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm still questionable about this bit. Mm. Personally, I've always thought I was introverted. Natural born leader, full we of just, passion yeah. and charisma. Forming around 2% of the population, they are oftentimes our politicians, our coaches and our teachers. <laughs> reaching out and inspiring others to achieve and do good in the world. With a natural confidence that, begin, that begets influence, protagonists take a great deal of pride and joy in guiding others to work together to improve themselves and their communities. Yeah, I would say that's right. Teaching and... Yeah, you're a great teacher. Mm -hmm. Am I going to read this whole thing? I don't think you have to. No, I think... Yeah, just read it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> read under your breath. Protagonists are genuine, caring people who talk the talk and walk the walk. Mm -hmm. Nothing makes them happier than leading the charge, uniting and motivating their team with infectious enthusiasm. I'd never ask someone to do anything if I didn't already know how to do it myself. Yeah. Thinking you never... creatively, <laughs> design-wise, software. Or... I was going to say, yeah, you never bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're most at home when they're in a relationship. Oh. Oh. Protagonists genuinely believe that if they can just bring people together, they can do a world of good. That's <laughs> you to a T. Invite everyone. Yeah. Bring them together. More than seeking authority themselves, mm -hmm. protagonists often end up in leadership roles at the request of others. Yeah. Cheered on by the many admirers of their strong personality and positive vision. That's why you. That's exactly what I just said before. It's like I never group choose to do it. I just yeah. end up with it. Yeah. More likely to feel pity for the opposition than anger. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. 
If caught between a rock and a hard place, protagonist can be st stricken with par paralysis, imagining all the consequences of their actions, especially if those consequences are humanitarian. Yeah. You do struggle. Yeah, I mean, you know, you stand up for a cause you want, but it's it's done in the wrong way, or it's the wrong timing, or it's... Well, usually tactful and often helpful if their friend is already annoyed by protagonist attempts to push them forward, which you do. <laughs> it can simply cause them to dig in their heels further, which is like... No, when to stop pushing. Insight of the day. Protagonists are the most li likely personality type to defend someone who is being bullied. That is you. <laughs> hmm? Do you feel like it resonates with you? I think it's pretty accurate. Mm. And yeah, 16 personalities and... We come under the category of, what was it? Diplomats. Diplomats. It's all about people. And, and maintaining the peace. Yes. <laughs> we but are very diplomatic in our process. Also means process. like creative, just passionate about things. The INFP. Also so you're a mediator. Yeah. That are curious about the depths of human nature. Oh my god, nature, this is you. And they often make an effort to understand other people's true feelings. This can make them capable of great empathy. It can also enable them to communicate in ways that are sensitive, original, and quite moving. They can have a tendency to daydream and fantasize rather than take action. <laughs> if they don't act on their dreams and ideas, mediators are likely to end up feeling frustrated or unfulfilled. There's a lot of time in the headspace not getting to the make action. it. Action, yeah. And then that's me coming and trying to push you. Yeah, exactly. And then you're digging your heels in because you're like, no, don't push me more. And I'm like, but you're not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, it may feel directionless or stuck unless they connect with a sense of purpose for their lives. Empathetic by nature, these personalities may feel other people's sufferings as if they were their own. Yep, that is definitely you. You sponge. <laughs> I can be overwhelmed by all the problems that can't fix that they're tempted to give up on even trying. Hmm. Mediators are the most likely personality type to need at least half an hour to really wake up. Because <laughs> I'm in my head. <laughs> Do you think this is me? It's quite lofty, this description, though. It's, yeah, see, this doesn't make sense. There's a thing of a desire to please everyone. Like, you're not a people pleaser. Sometimes I am. You just I naturally am. do please people, but you're not, like... But, but sometimes I am when I make a decision. Because I'm very much like, no, let's see what everyone else wants to do. Mm. But then you're natural leader. <laughs> We're all relying on you to make the decision, but then you never make the decision. <laughs> Not everyone can match mediator standards for morality and authenticity. <laughs> and their idealised expectations might not be realistic. Well, yeah. Glad to have ticked those boxes then, <laughs> are you? But I don't easily get impressed. Uh, this okay. is also you. Always dreaming up ways to improve yourself and the world around them. Hmm. As a result, many people with this personality type dedicate themselves to helping their partners improve their lives. You need to be careful not to lose sight of your own needs and priorities. Mm -hmm. This is very true. Yeah. This honestly looks like a board game, this packaging. You're right in saying it looks like Argos. It looks like an Argos catalogue. <laughs> Summer holidays, have some fun. Bop it! Yeah, because you're like playing with your <laughs> yeah. kids! Ta da! Yeah, that's a, a nice hefty weight, obviously a bit bigger than the other one. So that is going to be replacing that. Maybe it will go there. No, I suppose it is about the width of my MacBook Pro. Eight inputs now, rather than four. But key things are two USBs that I'm happy about, headphone out, that's pretty useful, two HDMIs out. It's all about this super sauce. What, is that going to be your favourite key? No, I'll create a thing on the iPad for that. I should probably mention Blackmagic sent this out, by the way, after they saw my video that I made on that. Hashtag gifted. Hashtag gifted. I know. I get it if it's an actual gift, but this is more of a business proposal. I think it should be called... Well, I guess when people say PR gift... Yeah, it's just gift makes it sound like it's a present. A present. <laughs> well, like, it kind of is. Yeah, but there's so much more intention behind it on both sides, isn't there? Oh, uh, yeah. Because they, they are giving to receive that in this guy. Yeah, so obviously I've been doing a lot of live streams the last year. I uh, made the video on my channel all about the, the setup and everything. Blackmagic Design saw that setup 
and they were like, hey, we've got this new Extreme, which was kind of hilarious that they announced that the day that I exported my streaming setup. <laughs> so all of the hacks and things that I've been doing with this older unit have now been fixed and corrected in this newer, bigger, more powerful unit. Anyway, so they've sent it out and I'm obviously going to have a lot of fun playing with it and will use it in my own live streams and the Adobe Live stuff that I'm doing. Yeah, so I'm doing weekly live streams now. That's kind of the the big goal, celebrating the art and the heart, which I've discussed uh, a few times on the channel before. And it's all about people who are passionate about creativity, trying to create more community around it. I've got some long-term goals on it as well. Um, so it's not just live streams. I want to develop it further into actual, you know, events and meetups and stuff when we can. But yeah, this is kind of a, a growing thing. It's blossoming. My, my other parcel that arrives later is um, is something I'm very, very excited for. But can't like go overboard in excitement because nothing will get done. So <laughs> I'm going to start with this. The doorbell will go and I will get completely distracted, probably half finished setting this up. And we will not see productivity for a little while. <laughs> For years, I have wanted one of these, but they've never quite been powerful enough, and I've never quite had a reason to have one. Until now. Now they're very powerful, and I've got many reasons to have one. So yeah, this is a Mac Mini that I'm going to be using as... I think for the moment, I might actually make it as my primary Mac, but the long-term goal on it is that it's going to be like a secondary admin business type of running in the background Mac, the type of thing that will be encoding files and transferring things and just managing storage and other stuff and just the always on, always available admin Mac. Um, but for the moment, I think it's actually going to be more powerful than my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which has been pissing me off no end on <laughs> various things <laughs> until I can eventually get uh, an iMac when they eventually update those. And this will run alongside that. But for the time being, I think this is going to be a primary thing potentially even a travel Mac coming with us if we go away for like three months or so, which we have done on, on numerous occasions in the past. Mac Mini! Mm. So can I order one Mac Mini with a side of fries and a Sprite, please? <laughs> oh. It's weird seeing a black cable. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting it to be white. I've spent the majority of today under the desk already, cable tying in stuff. It's difficult because I'm setting up two things, but um, eventually I think this Mac Mini is going to sit under the desk. I'm just going to get like a bracket for it. And you just did your desk setup video. I know, I know. <laughs> Another special delivery. Another one. Oh, that's a nice feel. I like these tabs. Wait, what's this one? Just a different size which you'll probably need because you've got dinky wrists. Oh, I didn't even know that they had a small Did you have a small one? Yeah. So I could use your small one? No, because I've got a different sized face. Yours is a 40 mil, which oh. is the, the width that... Whereas I got the 44, because you'll look lost with the 44. I see. It's small. Yeah, it's nice. I like it. Um, yeah, you got to charge it and then just pair it with your phone now. 